Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and soon we're going to continue our discussion on logarithmic functions. So in the previous video, we talked about how to convert from logarithmic to exponential form, and also how to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form. And we also talked about how to evaluate logarithmic functions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the domain of a logarithmic function, how to graph a logarithmic function by plotting points, and how to graph a logarithmic function by describing the transformations used to obtain the graph from its basic function, y equals log base a of x. So let's talk about graphs of logarithmic functions. So suppose that you have a function f of x, which has domain a, range b, and it's a one-to-one -one function. Then it does have an inverse function, and the inverse function f inverse of x has domain b, which was the range of a for the original function f of x, and the inverse function will have range a, which was the domain of the original function f of x. Since we've already discussed the domain and range for exponential functions, and they are actually the inverse function for logarithmic functions, then we actually know the domain and range of logarithmic functions as well. So recall that the domain of f of x, which is equal to base a raised to the x exponent, the domain of an exponential function was a set of all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. And the range of the function f of x, which is equal to base a raised to the x exponent, the range was 0 to infinity, or the positive real numbers. Since a logarithmic function is the inverse function of an exponential function, we know that the domain of f of x, which is an exponential function, will be the range of the inverse function, which is a logarithmic function of base a. So the range of the inverse function of f of x, which is equal to log base a of x, is the set of all real numbers, neg infinity to infinity. And the domain of the inverse function, log base a of x, is the range of f of x, which is an exponential function, with base a raised to the x exponent. So the domain of a logarithmic function is 0 to infinity, or the positive real numbers. So what this means is that the argument of the logarithm, base a, must be a positive real number for the logarithm to, to give you an output value. There are also several properties that we can learn about the graph of logarithmic functions based on properties discussed earlier about the graphs of exponential functions. So recall that an exponential function, f of x, equals base a raised to the x exponent. If a is greater than 1, then we saw that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, or y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote, as x approaches negative infinity, so the left end of your graph. And if the function f of x, which is equal to base a raised to the x exponent, if the base is between 0 and 1, the x-axis, y equals 0, is again a horizontal asymptote, but this time it's whenever x approaches positive infinity, or the right end of your graph. And we also saw that there are no x-intercepts for an exponential function that has base a raised to the x exponent, and the y-intercept on the graph was 0, 1. So the graph that's on the left is for an exponential growth function. Notice that you have no x-intercepts, the y-intercept is 0, 1. Whenever x approaches negative infinity, the y values are approaching 0, or the x-axis, because that's where you have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. And on the graph on the right is for exponential decay functions, where the base is between 0 and 1. You still have no x-intercepts. The y-intercept is 0, 1. And it looks like as x approaches positive infinity, the y values are approaching 0, or approaching the x-axis, because the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 as x approaches positive infinity. Well, this means that the inverse function, f inverse of x, which is log base a of x, if the base is greater than 1, then we're going to have a vertical asymptote, which is going to be the y-axis instead of the x-axis. And also, the y values will decrease without bound or approach negative infinity. If the base of the logarithm is between 0 and 1, there will be a vertical asymptote at the y-axis again, x equals 0, and the y values will increase without bound, or y values approach positive infinity instead. And also notice that you have no y-intercept this time, and you also have an x-intercept of 1, 0. However, if you want to graph a logarithmic function, you can also reflect the graph of the exponential function about the line y equals x. Wherever you have an exponential function, f of x, which is equal to base a raised to the x exponent, if the base is greater than 0 and the base is not equal to 1, then you obtain the graph of its inverse function, f inverse of x, which is log base a of x. So let's say you have an exponential decay function. The exponential decay function is one that's graphed in blue, and it's decreasing from left to right, so that's why it's called a decay function, where the base is between 0 and 1. Notice you have a y-intercept of 0, 1, and the graph is decreasing as you go to the right. As x approaches positive infinity, the y values are approaching 0, or the x-axis. So now let's take this graph for the exponential decay function, y equals base a to the x, where the base is between 0 and 1, and let's reflect it across the line, y equals x. We get the logarithmic function, log base a of x, where the base is between 0 and 1. So notice you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, because it looks like the y values are increasing without bound as x gets closer and closer to 0 from the right side. And for this reason, you have no y-intercept. The graph will never touch or cross the y-axis, because it's a vertical asymptote. You do have an x-intercept at 1, 0, because that's where the graph will cross the x-axis. And it looks like the graph will continue to decrease as you go to the right, and it's for its end behavior. 
On the other hand, let's say we have an exponential growth function. This time the function will grow from left to right or increase from left to right. It looks like it'll pass through the y-axis at 0, 1 and it will increase without bound as you go to the right. So as x approaches positive infinity, the y values approach a positive infinity. But as you approach the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, the y values are approaching zero because there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So let's reflect this graph for y equals base a to the x where the base is greater than one across the line y equals x. We obtain the graph that's in pink, which is y equals log base a of x where the base is greater than one. Notice that you have an x-intercept of one comma zero, you do not have a y-intercept because there's a vertical asymptote at the y-axis again, x equals zero, and it looks like the y values decrease without bound as the x values approach zero from the right side, and it looks like the graph will increase without bound as x approaches positive infinity. There are many ways to obtain the graph of a logarithmic function. In the next example, we're going to plot points and then convert each logarithmic form to an equivalent exponential form. So example four, graphing a logarithmic function by plotting points. Sketch the graph of the logarithmic function f of x, which is equal to log base 2 of x, by plotting points. So we notice this in the graph, that there is a vertical asymptote for this function at x equals 0, or the y-axis. And the graph doesn't exist on the left side of the vertical asymptote. It only existed as x approaches 0 from the right side. Let's choose these x values, x equals 0, x equals 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now if you substitute these values into the logarithm function, which is log base 2 of x, you insert the x values in for the argument of the logarithm, and then you want to find out what are the output values, the y values. So if you input 0, notice if you input x equals 0, there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So that means there are no y values whenever x equals 0. So no output values, which means the y values are undefined whenever x is equal to 0. Whenever x is equal to 1, you have f of 1, which will be log base 2 of 1. In other words, what is the exponent on 2 that will give you 1? Well, 2 to the 0 is equal to 1, so this answer is 0. Log base 2 of 1 is equal to 0. That means if you input 1, the y value or the output value is 0. So you'll have an x-intercept at 1, 0. Whenever x is equal to 2, your function will be f of 2, which will be log base 2 of 2. In other words, what is the exponent on base 2 that will give you itself 2 back? Well, the exponent must be 1. 2 to the first power is itself, which is 2. And so you input x equals 2, the output is y equals 1. So this is a point 2 comma 1 on the graph of the logarithmic function log base 2 of x. Whenever x is equal to 4, f of 4 will be log base 2 of 4. So what is the exponent on base 2 that will give you 4? It has to be 2. So 2 squared gives you 4. So log base 2 of 4 is 2. So 4 comma 2 will be a point on your logarithmic function graph. So 4 comma 2. And then whenever x is equal to 8, you'll have f of 8, which is log base 2 of 8. So what is the exponent on base 2 that will give you 8? It has to be 3. So because 2 cubed is equal to 8. So you have 8 comma 3, also a point on the graph of the logarithmic function log base 2 of x. So if you plot these points, you actually obtain the graph of the logarithmic function. You have the graph that passes through 1 comma 0, 2 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 8 comma 3, and so on. Notice that you also have the point at 1 half comma negative 1. What is the exponent on base 2 that would give you 1 half? Well, the exponent on 2 must be negative 1. So 1 half comma negative 1 is also a point on the logarithmic function. And you also have the point 1 fourth comma negative 2 because 2 to the negative 2 exponent would give you 1 fourth. So it looks like the y values are decreasing without bound as x approaches 0 from the right side. And that's because you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And the graph will increase without bound as x approaches positive infinity. Notice that this logarithmic function's graph is symmetric with respect to the line y equals x for the graph of the exponential growth function y equals base 2 to the x, which is the inverse function for f of x. The exponential growth function with base 2 would pass through the points 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8, and so on, and also negative 1, 1 half, and also negative 2, 1 fourth. Remember, inverse functions have all the x values and the y values swapped places. So the x values are now the y values for the inverse function, and the y values are now the x values for the inverse function. So you can see that with the graphs between the logarithmic function, log base 2 of x, and the exponential growth function, y equals base 2 to the x. Since you had a vertical asset at x equals 0, the exponential growth function, y equals base 2 to the x, will have a horizontal asymptote where y equals 0, which is the x-axis. The logarithmic function had no y-intercept, the exponential function, the inverse, had no x-intercept. The x-intercept for the logarithm function was 1, 0. The inverse function's y-intercept was 0, 1. So the domain of the logarithm function is the set of all positive real numbers, or 0 to infinity, both with parentheses, 
and the range of the logarithmic function is the set of all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. The following figure is going to show a family of logarithmic functions with bases 2, 3, 5, and 10. These graphs are actually drawn by reflecting the graphs of the exponential functions, y equals base 2 raised to the x exponent, y equals base 3 raised to the x exponent, y equals base 5 to the x exponent, and y equals base 10 to the x exponent, where you reflect each of the exponential functions across the line, y equals x, to get their inverse function, log base 2 of x, log base 3 of x, log base 5 of x, and log base 10 of x. So notice in each of these graphs where you have log base 2 of x, log base 3 of x, log base 5 of x, and log base 10 of x, where you actually have each of these functions graphed, all four of them will actually cross the x-axis at 1 comma 0 because we had a property involving logarithms in the previous video where log base a of 1 was always 0 because you take base a and you raise to the 0 power, you get 1 as long as the base is positive and not equal to 1. So if you insert 1 into any of these logarithmic functions, the output will be zero. So the x-intercept will always be one comma zero. You have a vertical asymptote for each of these graphs at x equals zero or the y-axis. So in other words, you have no y-intercept. The graph will never cross or touch the y-axis. The domain for each of these graphs is zero to infinity because the graph doesn't exist on the left side of the y-axis where x is less than zero. And the range looks like it's from negative infinity to infinity or the set of all real numbers. The graph decreases without bound the closer x approaches zero from the right side and it looks like the graph will increase without bound as x approaches positive infinity. In the next example, we're going to discuss the domain of a logarithmic function where a vertical asymptote will exist with its graph. So example five, domain of logarithmic functions. Determine the domain for each of the following logarithmic functions, express your answer using interval notation, and what is the vertical asymptote in the graph of the logarithmic function? So number one, the function that we're gonna look at is f of x, which is equal to log base four of two x plus three. Two x plus three is the argument of the logarithm, base four and then plus 12 outside the logarithm's argument. Notice that the argument of the logarithm must be a positive number. You can only evaluate a logarithm function wherever the argument is positive. So 2x plus 3 must be greater than 0. So this gives us a way to actually find out the domain of the logarithmic function without actually graphing. Solve the inequality, 2x plus 3 greater than 0 for x. So subtract 3 on both sides of the inequality. You have 2x is greater than negative 3, and then divide both sides with the inequality by positive 2. And since you divide by positive number, do not flip or swap the inequality. It stays exactly the same as x is greater than negative 3 divided by 2, or negative 3 halves. So in other words, all the x values that you input into this function, log base 4 of 2x plus 3 and then plus 12, the x values must be greater than negative 3 halves. Or using interval notation, negative 3 halves with a parenthesis, comma, infinity. And you have a vertical asymptote at the value x equals negative 3 halves for this graph of the logarithmic function log base 4 of 2x plus 3 and then plus 12 outside the argument. Let's try number 2. This time g of x is the function log base 6 of the quantity x divided by 2 then subtract 5. That's the argument x divided by 2 subtract 5 and then subtract 3 is not part of the argument. It's outside the logarithm. So again, it doesn't matter what the base of the logarithm function is. It doesn't matter what we're subtracting or adding outside the argument. The argument of the logarithm must be a positive number for us to actually have an output value for any x value that we input into the function. So x divided by 2 subtract 5 must be greater than 0. So we can solve this inequality to find out the domain of the logarithmic function. x divided by 2 subtract 5 greater than 0 means if you add 5 to the other side of the inequality, x divided by 2 must be greater than 5. And if you multiply both sides of the inequality by 2, positive 2, the inequality stays the same direction, does not flip or swap. It still is x is greater than 5 times 2 on the right side of the inequality, which is 10. So x must be greater than 10. So the domain for this logarithmic function, log base 6 of the quantity x divided by 2, subtract 5, and then subtract 3 outside the argument, the domain is from 10 to infinity, not including 10, which means you have a vertical asymptote at the value x equals 10. So we've seen how to graph a logarithmic function by plotting points and also actually reflecting the graph of an exponential function across the line y equals x. Now let's talk about transformations in the graph of logarithmic functions. In the following example, we're going to graph a logarithmic function by starting with a basic logarithmic function, graphed, and then using transformation discussed earlier. So example six, graphing logarithmic functions using transformations. Sketch the graph of each of the following logarithmic functions using transformations obtained from the basic logarithmic function, y equals log base a of x, where the base must be positive, must be greater than zero, and the base must not be equal to one. Determine the domain and the range and any asymptotes. So number one, we're going to graph the function f of x, which is equal to the opposite of log base five of x to track three. 
So it looks like we're going to start with the basic logarithmic function y equals log base 5 of x because the logarithm's base is 5. So y equals log base 5 of x, if you want to graph the function f of x, it looks like there's a negative sign out in front. That's going to be a reflection across the x-axis because the y values are going to change sign when you multiply by negative 1. And it also it looks like your x, the argument of the logarithm, log base 5 of x, has now been replaced with x subtract 3 as the argument for our function f of x. So that's a horizontal shift right 3 units. So let's start with the graph of y equals log base 5 of x. We know that there will be a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And there will also be an x-intercept at 1 comma 0 because log base 5 of 1 is equal to 0. And we also know that this graph will pass through the point 5 comma 1 because log base 5 of 5 is equal to 1. 5 to the first power will give you itself 5 back. And so it looks like the graph will decrease without bound as x approaches 0 from the right side. And it looks like the graph will increase without bound as x approaches positive infinity. Now let's talk about the graph of f of x if it's a reflection across the x-axis and also horizontal shift right three units. Notice that the y-axis, x equals zero, was a vertical asymptote for the graph of y equals log base five of x. If you reflect across the x-axis, the vertical asymptote is unaffected. It's still x equals zero. However, if you have a horizontal shift right three units, the vertical asymptote will also be shifted right three units, and now the vertical asymptote will be x equals three for the graph of f of x. Since we had an x-intercept at one comma zero, Let's see what happens with this point after the transformations. If you reflect the graph across the x-axis, the x-intercept is unaffected. It'll stay 1, 0. However, if you shift the graph right 3 units, now we'll have the point at 4, 0, which is still an x-intercept, but this will be a point for the graph of f of x. And the logarithmic function log base 5 of x will pass through the point 5, 1. If this point is reflected across the x-axis, it'll be 5, negative 1. And then if it's shifted right 3 units, now it'll be a point 8, negative 1. So the graph of the logarithmic function f of x, which is equal to the opposite of log base 5 of the quantity x subtract 3, will have a vertical asymptote to x equals 3, and it will pass through the points 4, 0, and also 8, negative 1. It looks like the graph increases without bound as x approaches positive 3 from the right side, and the y values decrease without bound as x approaches positive infinity. And so this is a sketch of the graph of f of x, which is the opposite of log base 5 of the quantity x subtract 3. And now number two, let's graph the function g of x, which is equal to log base three of the quantity negative x, then add two outside the argument of the logarithm. So it looks like the basic logarithmic function this time will be y equals log base three of x. And if we want to graph the function g of x, it looks like the transformations are going to be a reflection across the y-axis because we're replacing the x, which was the argument of y equals log base three of x, and now the argument's negative x. So the x have been replaced with the negative x, that's a reflection across the y-axis. And then the plus 2 outside the argument of the logarithm will shift the graph vertically up 2 units. So again, let's start with the basic logarithmic function y equals log base 3 of x. We know that they will have a vertical asymptote to x equals 0, or the y-axis. We know that there will be an x-intercept of 1, 0. And this graph will also pass through the point 3, 1 because log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1. 3 to the first power is equal to 3. And so the graph will decrease without bound as x approaches 0 from the right side, and the graph will increase without bound as x approaches positive infinity. So let's see what happens to the graph with the transformations of reflection across the y-axis and also a vertical shift up two units. Let's see what happens with the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is x equals 0. If we reflect across the y-axis, it's still unaffected. It'll still stay x equals 0. And if we shift the graph vertically up two units, the vertical asymptote is still x equals 0. So x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote for the graph of g of x, which is log base 3 of negative x as the argument, and then plus 2 outside the argument. Now let's see what happens to the x-intercept. The x-intercept was 1, 0. If we reflect across the y-axis, that will be negative 1, 0. And if we shift the graph up vertically 2 units, that will now be negative 1, 2. So our graph of g of x will pass through the point negative 1, 2. And now also, the y equals log base 3 of x passes through the point 3, 1. If it's reflected across the y-axis, it'll now be at negative 3, 1. And now shifted vertically up 2 units will now be at the point negative 3, 3. And so now we have an idea what the graph will look like. The graph will pass through the points negative 1, 2 and also negative 3, 3. It looks like the graph will increase without bound as x approaches negative infinity. But the graph will decrease without bound as x approaches 0 from the left side. And so this is a sketch of the graph of the function g of x, which is log base 3 of negative x. And then outside the argument is plus 2.
So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about how to determine the domain of a logarithmic function, how to graph a logarithmic function by plotting points, and how to graph a logarithmic function by describing the transformations used to obtain the graph from its basic function, y equals log base a of x. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the common and natural logarithms.